For those who have been following the development of the intelligent design research community, people may be aware that we have, uh, for the most part, studiously avoided uh, not so much addressing the question, but making it any kind of focus of our work. And part of the reason for that is uh, that the issue has, a, a, first of all, not all members of the intelligent design research community are theists or even Christians, uh, or Christians or even theists. Uh, said, but many of us are. I'm a Christian. I'm a theist. I'm also an advocate of intelligent design. W among those of us who are Christians, I think that we're acutely aware that the age of the earth has become a strangely toxic issue within the Christian, uh, th within the Christian church. And I had an opportunity a few years ago to attend a creation conversation that was uh, set up to, to try to sort out these differences among advocates of the young earth and advocates of the old earth view of creationism. They were all creationists. And I was asked to give an opening talk on the methods by which we weigh evidence. Uh, similar, to, I was talking about that method of inference to the best explanation. And I was trying to explain how people of goodwill could come to different uh, views about things like this based on how they weighed competing classes of evidence and that uh, these things weren't always simple. I can't, then the advocates of the different views set about to argue their cases with each other. I left the meeting thinking that what we needed more than excellent exposition or uh, additional scientific data or greater philosophical acumen was a good Christian counselor to help with the communication skills that were in evidence. <laughs> because the, sub, the, the messages that were being sent, the subtext, you know, the, the, the old earth people were saying, you know, without saying in so many words, they were saying to the young earth people, you ignoramuses bringing disrepute to the church with your, uh, you know, backward view of things and your ignorance of geology, etc. And the young earth people saying to the old earth people without saying so in so many words, um, you compromising liberals, you know, you, you, uh, you know, always going with the secular science establishment instead of standing on the word of God. Oh my goodness, you know, it, it, it's toxic. And from the standpoint of prioritizing the issues, um, I do think it's a tertiary issue. The first issue is whether or not, the first issue is the reality of God. Is God real or imaginary? This is the issue that Romans 1 speaks to. It's the, and in our time, the primary apologetic uh, challenge to the church is coming from this dominant secular materialistic worldview. And while we Christians have been busy arguing with each other over how long ago it was that God created, we've given the secularists a pass on the fundamental issue of the day, which is the reality of God versus this materialistic worldview. I think a second issue, a, a secondary issue is, can we know that from the things that are made? This is what Paul insists on in Romans 1, that the reality of God is knowable from what's been made. And then it is a perfectly interesting and acceptable issue to discuss how long ago it might have taken place. How do we interpret these days of Genesis? But we have focused so much attention on that issue and we've missed, we, we, we've strained at gnats and, and, um, and, and passed through the camels. So we in the ID movement have tried to make that issue one that can be discussed uh, uh, um, congenially or you know, in, in a friendly way among the different participants in this scientific research program, and we have people of different views on that, but as Philip Johnson, who's in some ways the, the, the founder of the way for us, uh, he put it, it should never have become a causus belli, a, a cause for war. This is something that we can discuss amicably, and uh, so it's, it's been, that's been our approach, and in some ways, I'm, I, I'll tell you what my view is. I don't really want to justify it very much, especially in this context, because it, it becomes very quickly a deviation from that approach. And I, I will tell you, I hold an old earth view, and I, um, but I, I, I tend to the view that, that anatomically modern man, our species, is fairly recent, much more recent than you get from the paleoanthropologists. So I have a kind of a hybrid view. I have colleagues within the ID movement who are, um, who are young earth people and with whom I collaborate on important scientific projects. Uh, Paul Nelson, in particular, is a very close friend and collaborator. So um, 
we're, we're trying to approach this issue in a different spirit rather than settle it. And I have people that I respect who are excellent biblical expositors on both sides of the issue, and I have scientist friends on both sides of the issue. I would say that our focus is on a more primary issue, and I think it'd be good for, for the church to, to have some, it is important to understand that truth divides. At the same time, there are primary truths and there are secondary truths and there are ones that are maybe even further down the list. And, it, it, and having some sense of the ranking and the priority of those things is important so that we can keep our, our focus on, on the, really the, the primary challenge of the day. So that's... Dr. Tackett? So are we out of time? <laughs> Um, this is a very, very di divisive issue that uh, shouldn't be divisive, but it is. And uh, Del, before you go for it, can I say one other thing? Um, I, well, just, it was, we we it, only it was, have 20 seconds, yeah. so take okay. it. Well, it's, no, I'm, it's, I'm kidding. You're hoping I leave you no time. Please, that's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> th there's a really great uh, person that many people know, Lee Strobel. He's written a wonderful book. Uh, he's written a series of apologetic books. And one of the books that he's written is The Case for Creator, okay? And, uh, and we've done some conferences with Lee, and we have had people in the audience of all different, all different points of view on this, on this issue. But the primary affirmative thing that Lee has argued, in some ways based on a lot of the work that's been done in the ID movement, he's popularized you know, the privileged planet hypothesis or the, the William Lane Craig's cosmological argument. Or, and many of these arguments that are coming out of the ID movement are age neutral. You don't need to accept one view or the other to, to make them work. And what happens in churches, even in churches where people have a very definite view one way or another, once they see that, that, that there is a winning argument being offered, people suddenly say, you know, I'm really not all that exercised about this issue. People got the idea that I needed to defend one view or the other to have some credibility to make the scripture work so that my apologetic would work. And when uh, my, my, the analogy that I've often given is it, it's like a... Um, a dog with a stick, and the dog is clenching, and you try to pull the stick out of the mouth, and the dog, you know, is not going to g g release it. Then you add, a give the dog a nice juicy bone, and suddenly the stick is not nearly so important. And uh, I think what we've seen in some of these case for creator conferences that we've done with Lee Strobel is when people see there is a winning affirmative argument that maybe doesn't settle all these theological questions, they suddenly relax and say, what I was really looking for was an affirmation of the core tenets of my faith in the face of this secular scientific um, challenge. And I now realize that maybe I don't need to make my response on those terms. There may be a more effective way to do that. And I think what the church has been looking for is not only truth, but a truth that transforms, that renews, that, that is persuasive. And the, some of the things that are coming out of this um, the, the ID movement and focusing on these tremendous developments in science that are showing us that there's a strong affirmative case in the, in the mode of Romans 1 from the things that are made. We can see the evidence of the reality of God. That's really what people have been looking for. And that gives us some space to have these other conversations without feeling like so much is hanging on them. Because what we're all really feeling is the pressure from this secular juggernaut. And, and now that some people are coming out of the woodwork and, and finding a better way to respond to that, people, people, I think, are relaxing about this other issue and able to deliberate on it more in a way that is less toxic, less accusatory, one to another within the church. So.